Bend Around the Wind by Skylia. Chapter 84. Pax. Hadjit was further disappointed that he didn't get to punch anyone yet. He was really looking forward to it. Skin meeting skin, bone crushing bone. It was primal in a way that reminded him of the early days of his youth. Well, and he was learning to hunt with the fae in wolves' woods. The first knives he carved himself were made from stone and bone, crude, but still deadly if wielded right. He could never skin his game properly. His knives tore at the flesh and the fur coat. No chance for clean cuts. Using a sharp knife was easy. The slick metal slid into the body of his prey like it was butter. His bone knives, though. By the time he was done skinning and cutting up the animal, he was always tired, sweaty, bloody, and dirty beyondwards. Baba said it taught him how much effort it took to take a life, how much energy it cost predators to survive, how you needed to think in advance whether the kill was worth the effort if you really needed to take a life in the first place. You did not kill out of pleasure, but out of need. Need for survival, need for safety, need for revenge. This one lesson he learned so well, sometimes it felt like it was carved into his bones, but it all started with hunting. If something was hard to do, then he thought twice about doing it. He definitely ate fruit or just went fishing instead of hunting many, many times over the years. This was no hunt, though. This was a much more delicate matter. The rule still applied. That's why there was no blood spilt as of yet, because suddenly they were all in some temporary truce. At least the more he stared at the screens showing San Diego, the more certain he became that he was going to get his chance to punch someone in the immediate future. Because whoever was doing this, they definitely deserved their bike kicked. Hard. Don't you want to take a closer look? He asked Loki. They could easily get there. Without knowing what it is, Loki asked in return. I'm not a fool. Fair point. Loki was also right about it growing. As the minutes ticked by, it started to become visible, even from afar, growing stronger and more solid by the second. It shimmered and grew like a bubble. Oh, you should warn people, he said out loud. It took Fury a moment to realize that he was talking to him. What about what? To not try to get into the city, Hedget said. Is that what it is? Loki asked, squinting a little. Barrier? Yeah, that's my guess, Hedget said. What else could it be? No, you're right, Loki nodded. Okay, someone's pulling up a barrier around the city. Why? Stark asked, his voice coming through the speakers clearly. Very good question, Hedget agreed. I'm more curious about the who than the why, Fury said. Now tell me everything you know about this. Loki shrugged. Nothing more than what I already said. You should warn everyone you can. They may be able to cross the barrier right now, but as soon as it reaches its intended size, it will be impenetrable. The traffic needs to stop both on land, water, and in the air. You want me to stop all in and outgoing traffic on a 1.3 million large city? Fury asked. Nick, I'm going to express this in simple terms so that you can grasp the gravitas of the situation, Hatchet told him. If you don't, then you're going to have to watch them all get smeared on it like bugs on a windshield. It ain't gonna be pretty, believe me. We can't evacuate, Hill said. Not in ten minutes. People are going to panic. Super. Well, Fury turned to look at one of the agents. The ball man just nodded and moved over to some of the monitors. And one agent blank too. We need to stop it, Hill said, before it reaches its full size. The source must be already protected. Loki said, Stark, don't get too close to the city. You'd be an easy target. We're going to keep out of sight. Stark agreed. Steve's on the line, by the way. One of the screens switched from the view of San Diego to Steve Rogers' face. We're going to be on the move in about ten minutes, he said right away. But it's going to take like four hours to get there. We're going to be there in one, Fury said. We'll keep things under control as long as we can. What about Bruce? Steve asked. On his way through. Stark said, ETA in two hours. Fury nodded, then turned to look at Loki with a stern expression. I don't need to tell you how much it pains me to ask this, but could you do anything about stopping this? No, Loki answered. It's not a technological device, not purely. There was obviously a large amount of cosmic energy involved. Interfering with it without knowing exactly how it was constructed could 
have very destructive effects. By which he means it could blow up and take a large chunk of the city with it. Hedgett clarified. Who has the power or the technology to create something like this? Fury asked. No, but beyond Midgard. But beyond that, the list is too long, Loki said. Then he frowned and glanced at Agent Hill. Did you say that your council instructed you to ignore this? Yes. Then maybe we know where we need to ask some more questions, Loki said. Fury and Hill shared a long look. Then Fury nodded. Get to get here as soon as you can. Bring everyone you have, he said. On our way, all seven of us. Steve nodded. Stork. Fury questioned. On my ship with my buddies Drongo and you. We're on our way there, Stark said. But we really can't go blind into this. No, we can't. Fury agreed. I'll see about getting some aces. Keep an eye on everything, he'll. Fury turned to leave. Floki followed him, so Hatchet and B did as well. Fury raised a questioning eyebrow. I'll keep out of sight, but I will hear this, Loki declared. Fury didn't even try to argue with them. Time was of the essence, after all. The side room was smaller and darker than the bridge itself, and the screens only lit up once the door was shut. These council members were apparently very careful about their hidden identities. None of their faces were seen. They were just dark shadows. Fury stood in the middle of the room, facing the screens, while Loki, Hatchet, and B stayed on the side, out of sight. Hatchet thought about hiding their presence altogether, but the positions of the cameras in the room gave them enough hiding space already. You have asked our presence on board, Director Fury, was the very first thing a woman said. Questionable presence, Fury corrected, which is not a priority right now. San Diego is. Your priority is to capture that criminal, a man said. You want me to try to wrestle it with my bare hands? Fury asked coolly in return. You really do not have the means to restrain him, get to him, or lock him up in any way. The situation in San Diego must be dealt with immediately, on the other hand. I require all the information you may possess about it. San Diego is under control. It is not your place to- Another man spoke, but Fury interrupted. There are almost one and a half million people in that city, not to mention it's home to the majority of the U.S. Pacific's fleet surface combatants, all of the Navy's West Coast amphibious ships, and a variety of Coast Guard and military sea lift command vessels. Supercarriers, assault ships, fast attack submarines, destroyers, cruisers, frigates, not to mention the tens of thousands of marines and soldiers. Right as we speak, a powerful dome is being formed around the city, an impenetrable barrier cutting it off from the rest of the country. That is someone obviously dangerous and unpleasant at work here. The more I look at it, the more it looks like the biggest hostage situation I've ever seen. So frankly, I don't give a damn about Loki of Asgard or Tony Stark right now. Hatchet found himself smiling a little at the short tirade as his magic curled up under his skin in amusement. It made him want to hit Fairy in his one remaining eye a little less. The situation will be under control once you have captured them, another council member said, which really captured Loki's attention. Hatchet listened a little more closely as well. Them, both Loki and Stark. Fury narrowed his eye. You know who's under that dome? They have already agreed to a price, Loki spoke up, stepping forth from the shadows. Director Fury, one of the men in the screen protested right away. Who is it who is demanding me as ransom for your city? Loki demanded. And who else do they want, Stark? Director Fury, you will be relieved of your duties unless you... Unless what? Seize him? I'm open to suggestions as to how I could possibly be able to do that. And I will interfere in San Diego unless you have a good reason why I shouldn't. Your reasons are that you have been ordered not to, Director Fury, the councilwoman said. You have made a pact with someone, Loki said. With whom? And why? This dome. This is an attack on both the military and civilians. It is an act of terror, Fury said. I was under the assumption that we do not make deals with terrorists. It is extradition, Dr. Fury, one of the men on the screen replied, in order to prevent future hostile conflicts. That sounded like a big pile of horse crap, even a hatchet. I'm sure whatever chat you're having right now is important. Stark interrupted through the comlink, but you gotta cut it short and get outside to see this. Loki did not even look at the council, he just turned to leave. Stark opened the door for them right away. Fury looked at them in confusion, not having a direct connection with Stark. 
But when he caught sight of the very grim-looking hill right outside the door, he walked a little further outside as well. Stark's close enough to give us a better life footage, she said. The barrier is complete and the media noticed. It's as bad as we expected, but unfortunately, there's something more. Every single larger screen on the bridge showed the same picture. The Iron Mage had to be rather close to get to such a good view. The screens showed a ship hovering high up in the sky, far above the clouds, obviously out of sight from the ground. It was hard to guess exactly how large it was, but it was big enough and advanced enough, and definitely a battleship. Most of the agents on the bridge were staring at the screens with widened eyes, some with open shock. How the heck did we not know about this? Fury shouted, looking around at his agents. How did nobody know about this? To be fair, you only knew I came back with a spaceship because I announced it, Stark said. My ship's been hidden for quite a long time. If I have the technology to hide from satellites and everyone down on the surface, then others can do the same. And if the Council knew about it and kept it a secret? Hill trailed off because there was really no need to finish that thought. Any idea who the heck this could be? Stark asked. I don't know this type of ship, B said quietly, frowning at the image. It's not Skrull. Probably not from the Andromeda at all. It's not familiar to me either, Hatchet added. So it's not Kree or anything from the nearby star systems. He looked over at Loki to see whether he knew more. His friend had both of his hands clenched tightly. His lips were thinned, his eyes sharp and angry. Loki? Loki spun around and marched back closer to the screens that still showed the vague, darkened shapes of the council. You have made a deal with the other? You fools! He shouted. Fury turned as well, frowning deeply, his face darkening. Hatchet felt a familiar coil of anger in his gut as well. The other, the one who has put Loki and Stark through so much unimaginable pain and suffering. Hatchet's magic was thrumming, boiling, singing to find him spill his blood. The other, Fury questioned, the same old that you and Stark talked about. Exactly the same. Loki spat out. He turned back towards the dark screens, his eyes burning with anger. Do you have any idea what you have done? You think he only wants me? You think he will simply take me and be on his way? How stupid are you? Earth is going to stay out of conflicts between extraterrestrial beings, one of them said. You will be extradited like any other criminal who's hiding in the country would be. With that, our role in this conflict will be done. Loki laughed loud, sharp and unpleasant. It was the kind of laugh that meant that he was beyond angry. He's the one who sent me here to conquer you in the first place, the other and his master. Are you truly so gullible? Did you honestly believe that your planet would be left alone? If only you hadn't me over to him, he asked them, raging in disbelief. They intend to kill you all, destroy everything under your sun. They do not care about your planet or what aid you give them. This is only a starting point for them, the one place from where they can launch their attack on the rest of the Nine Realms. Loki's voice darkened further, deepened from his barely restricted rage. If the Mad Titan is approaching, if you allow them to come this close without warning any of us, then you have just doomed your world and everyone on it. Your empty threats will get you nowhere, one of the council members said with fake bravado. He was an older one from the sound of it. Hedget was tempted to find where he was to introduce his face to a fled surface. Loki shook his head and turned their back on him. Stark, this is... I know, but we're not alone. Stark replied, his voice still calm and steady. It had an immediate effect on Loki. He took a deep breath, straightened his shoulders, and unclenched his fists, getting himself under control. Damn straight you're not. Steve's voice joined them. You heard all this, Cap? Stark asked. Every word, Cap confirmed. So we know who we're dealing with. Now the only question is how to deal with them. Is it only the other? asked Natasha. They were both probably riding in the same aircraft. If it would be the Mad Titan, he would have announced his presence already, Loki said. At least I assume he would have. Inclination for theatrics, Fury asked. Indeed, Loki nodded. Also, he's too powerful to have the need to scheme and hide before striking down those who stand in his way. 
One of the screens showing the other's ship was suddenly taken over by the darkened face of one of the council members. Director Fury, he said, under no circumstances is Shield allowed to interfere or aid Tony Stark and his allies. Fury looked at the screen long and hard. Most of the agents tried to pretend that they were focusing on anything but this conversation. They were not doing a very good job of it. They were all awaiting the reply of their leader. I'm afraid the helicarrier has been taken over, Fury said finally. We have lost control over it. Fury, the council member started to warn him. You might say we're dealing with a hostage situation ourselves. Fury finished. Hill hit a smirk by turning her head away. Yeah, you got a bunch of bloody dangerous pirates on board, Hatchet said with a grin. Just so, Loki said. Stock. In a second, the council member's face vanished and the screen switched back to showing the other's ship. They won't be able to contact you from now on, Stark said. So how are we going to deal with this? Steve asked. How strong is that barrier? And the ship? The ship is a problem, Logi said. It's probably what powers most of the barrier. It's also likely that they are able to cross it, for nothing is protected against itself. If they're alerted to our presence, which I do not doubt will happen soon, they might take cover underneath it. If that happens, we won't be able to fight them, and they will have full access to your military bases and the people trapped in the city. Do we need to take down the ship to get rid of the dome? Steve questioned. Logi seemed to be deep in thought for a moment, then he glanced at Hatchet. He seemed to have been struck by an idea. Not if we're clever about this, he said. They all looked at him for a long moment, waiting for him to continue. So you got a plan? Stark asked in the end. San Diego is a big city, so we already have help on the inside. We just need to contact them, Logi said. What, the Navy? Steve asked. Can they attack the barrier from the inside? Loki glanced over to Hatchet with a meaningful look. Oh, right. I think Loki is talking about the more magically inclined local help, he said. We need to get inside the barrier for that. Loki nodded, his face serious, his mind obviously spinning with possibilities, crafting plans and mapping out their options. It couldn't just be anyone. Hajin had a bad feeling about whom Loki had in mind. Himself. The idea didn't set well with him. Quite the contrary. Stark would like it even less. A cold part of Hatchet's heart told him that risking Loki even a little was not worth it. His life and safety were more important, but it wasn't just about the lives of mortals. This was about Midgard being in direct danger for the first time since Loki was sent here for the Tesseract. Even back then, the realm was not truly at stake. If they did not strike down the other once and for all, these battles were going to turn into a war. A war much greater than anything Midgard had ever seen before, and a threat much deadlier than anything the Nine Realms had to deal with in a very long time. He knew all this. Understood all this. He still did not like it. Why choose San Diego, though? Hill asked, her gaze firmly on the screens, showing the others' ship and the city. Strategically speaking, Stark said, it's almost a better target than D.C. But if they have accurate enough knowledge about the country, why choose New York the first time around? Loki huffed out a small laugh at those words at the deliberately not well hidden jibe. It's rather simple, Agent Hill, he said. You see, I didn't actually intend to win. He does. I made a spectacle while he intends to strike you where it actually hurts. What I did was by no means a strategically well-constructed offensive maneuver. This... this very much is. It really puts things into perspective, don't you think? Hill just looked at him for a moment, then turned her gaze back to the screens. We're almost there, we need a plan. Fury said, a plan that actually works. I already have one, Loki told him. The question is, how much do you intend to play along? Fury looked at Loki curiously. Well, to the very least, he seemed willing enough to listen to the plan of nothing else. Oh no, I know that's out. Stark said, I'm not going to like this, am I? Probably not, Loki agreed. But we do not have much time or many options. Okay, you know what? 
Stark said. His face appeared in one of the center screens. He was wearing his armor, but not his helmet, just his DNI headband. He looked straight at Loki, his expression stern and deadly serious. Hedgett already knew that whatever came out of his mouth, there would be no argument about it because he already made up his mind. Whatever crazy plan you got in your head, I'm sure it's going to be risky, he said. I know better than to try and talk you out of it, but you're going to wait until the Avengers get there because we're going to need the extra backup. Loki looked back at him for a couple of seconds, then nodded. Very well, he agreed. Oh, it's going to be very bad if you agreed so easily. Stark sighed. Better not, let's hear it, Fury said. It's quite simple, actually, Loki turned to Fury. You're going to take me as your prisoner and hand me over to him.